This is March. What's going on everybody? Long time no see. Uh, it's March Madness. Let's break down every single team in the NCAA tournament. Today I'm obviously doing my yearly March Madness breakdown where I go through every single team, no matter if they're a one seed all the way down to the 16 seeds. I did my research. I've been hashtag locked in March. I've basically isolated myself for this video for you guys. Learned a lot about a lot of different teams, a lot of different playing styles. So get your popcorn, sit back, relax, listen to me talk about every single team in the NCAA tournament. Now, a quick reminder, I do this before the brackets released. So I try to give my projections. I understand that a lot of March Madness is how the bracket kind of lays out for the teams. So keep that in mind. But before I get into every single team, I have one favor to ask for you guys. Please go follow me on Twitter or X, whatever they call it now. Uh, I've been doing a lot of coverage over there uh, for college basketball, and I've been hashtag locked in March, isolating myself for college basketball. That's what we do, baby. I'm a sicko. I wouldn't want to be doing anything else. College basketball is life. So I really hope you enjoy. I put a lot of time into this, so let's do this thing. All right, well, there's no better team to start with than Connecticut. Yes, the UConn Huskies, the reigning national champion, they've definitely been probably the best team in college basketball this season, despite losing some key pieces from last year's team. This year's team, despite being a little bit different, they're still just as dominant. They play at that typical slow tempo. They're amazing at both ends, top 15 on Ken Palm at both offensive and defensive efficiency. They score everywhere. They're massive. They get after you. They hand check you. They are a nightmare to handle. And Dan Hurley is a psychopath that has turned this team into a runaway freight train and not only that they're going to have a major advantage in their bracket probably playing in brooklyn and then in boston and those connecticut fans they travel they're crazy man there's just so many positives heading into the tournament for this team obviously uconn has become a blue blood in college basketball for sure without a doubt in my mind and this team's really talented obviously led by tristan newton their rock star guard who's currently in the ken palm player of the year award list also donovan klingen is down low Low, a national player of the year candidate honestly he's just fantastic and then they're led by some guys from last year's team like Alex Caravan who is their go-to scorer in clutch time they've got a nice freshman in Stefan Castle that's been really good and then they obviously have Cam Spencer who was a Rutgers transfer that has just been a complete rock star for them there's no reason in my mind this team can't win a second national championship in a row it would be the first time a team has done that since the 2006 and 7 Florida Gators no reason to not believe this team can at least get to the final four I mean they're just a nightmare to handle and I don't see this team getting upset at all until at least maybe the final four, eventually even the national championship game hack, they'll probably even win the thing because they're the they're just that good. But if you're going to talk about UConn, you have to go straight into Purdue and Purdue. Obviously, they're having their villain origin story season after losing to a 16 seed last year. These Purdue guys have just heard so much crap about them, uh, you know, throughout the years. And even Matt Painter himself has just He's dealt with a lot because they can't ever seem to get over the hump. They're always the team that kind of gets upset and they've just become a little bit of a meme within college basketball and they just don't have that final four run to cement themselves really as a team that can get through the March grind. And I feel like this team has come back this year and have just been complete rock stars. Honest to God, I do believe in this Purdue team. There's really no reason you shouldn't. And I feel like they're going to be a team that gets completely slept on for that reason because they're the team that always chokes. But there's just a huge difference between the vibe of this year's team and last year's team, especially towards the end of the season. Season, but we have to get into what they've done this year. First off, let's look at their wins real quick. Uh, they beat Gonzaga. They beat Tennessee. They beat Marquette all in Maui when all those teams were healthy. They also beat Alabama. They beat Arizona. They beat Illinois two times. Uh, locked them up late down in the season. They have the wins to prove it. And another thing from last year's team to this year's team, Purdue ranked 276 on Kempom in three-point shooting percentage. And in that Fairleigh Dickinson game, I mean, they were terrified to shoot. It was a disaster. This year's team ranks second in college basketball in three-point shooting percentage. And the big reason why is Braden Smith, their star guard, has completely stepped up. He has become just so confident. And then Fletcher Lawyer, their other guard, he's been really great for them. They've got a transfer in Lance Jones from Southern Illinois, who has just been in so valuable to this team. Uh, he's completely changed the dynamic of their starting lineup. Trey Kaufman Wren has stepped up a big time this year. Mason Gillis, they're not relying on him to, you know, be a big time scorer. He's just shooting when he needs to, coming off the bench and it works. And then obviously Zach Eady, a two-time national player of the year. Gonna be impossible to officiate. I'm buying this Purdue team. Like genuinely, I, I might pick them to win it all in my bracket because I just feel like they're going to get slept on and 
I really do believe this team has turned around from last year. And I love that 2019 Virginia storyline. And I honestly think we might be seeing the same thing with this team. And I don't want to live with myself for not picking this team if they were to go on that run and win a national championship. I'll never forgive myself. That's why I think I might just pick Purdue in my bracket. Okay, let's jump to Houston, one of the best cultures in college basketball. Once again, they're one of the best teams in the sport. Kelvin Sampson, fantastic job he's done down there. That being said, this team, their starting five is really what carries them. They really rely on their two guards, Jamal Shedd and LJ Cryer, a Baylor transfer who was really good at Baylor, dealt with some injuries, but he's really kind of come into his own, been a little bit of a star guard for them. Uh, and then also this team's led by Emmanuel Sharp. They've got Damian Dunn, a Temple transfer, and Jawan Roberts down low again, still there. However, that being said, they've dealt with some injuries this year, like Terrence Anaru and Joe Tugler. Uh, both those guys are done for the season. So I do really worry about that, but you know, it's Houston. I swear to God, since like 2019, this is just a reoccurring thing with Houston. They have some injuries pop up. People kind of just just write them off. And yeah, those pieces, it sucks they don't have them, but they've proven time and time again that that just does not impact them whatsoever. But the main reason I worry about them, and I'm going to get killed for this, is the fact that their guards are really small. You know, you got to have dudes. And yes, these guys are extremely tough. They play some of the most connected basketball you'll see because they're just so locked in on their culture where they get after you, they go after rebounds, they kind of play in sync and they don't really ever panic because they're so bought into what they do. That's like, I mean, they're green lights everywhere. It's just when you look at their starting five versus another starting five or even like a little bit of depth, that's where I get nervous. It's definitely an unfair bias. I understand that because in their first two conference tournament games, the Big 12, they straight up punked TCU and then they did the same to Texas Tech. So this team is built for a tournament format where it gets ugly and they know how to score. They're always going to defend. Watch out for Houston. I'm not expecting a national championship from this group. However, they have the makeup of a team that can definitely get to Phoenix for the final four just due to the fact of how locked in of a group they are. Ah yes, the Tar Heels. There is a lot to discuss here. After last year's disappointing season of starting the season ranked number one, than missing the tournament. Uh, yeah, it's been a little while since going to the national championship game in 2022, but this roster still remains the same in a lot of ways. They've still got RJ Davis, who is maybe the best guard in the sport. I mean, there's been a couple games this season where he's dropped 40 points. I mean, he can literally win a game by himself. And obviously, Armando Baycott is still there. And this team's also added a couple of guys in the transfer portal, like Cormac Ryan from Notre Dame. They've got Harrison Ingram, who was at Stanford. He's emerged huge for them in their starting lineup. And then Elliot Cadeau, a freshman. He's really stepped up this year and kind of filled in that Caleb Love role who transferred to Arizona. And honestly, this North Carolina team, it took them some time to kind of figure out how to play with each other. But man, as of recently, this team's kind of been on fire. It's just a whole new dynamic. They figured out how to play with each other. They're an amazing defensive group and they've just kind of developed a chemistry over this season that is kind of a terrifying thing to be honest with you, because this is a team that has a lot to prove in the same way that Purdue has a lot to prove because they went to a national championship game. Then they missed the tournament. I mean, these guys did did not come back to, you know, to be the fifth oldest team in college basketball. They did not come back to just, you know, let an opportunity like this waste away. I mean, this is why they came back. So I'm a massive believer in this North Carolina team. I feel like they've kind of figured out how to play with each other. They figured out what exactly their identity is. And they have a guard like RJ Davis who can just completely take over a game and come up big for them. So I'm buying this North Carolina team. Definitely think they're a final four contender. They might be a great national championship contender when you're looking at it because they're probably not going to be picked like the Yukons are of the world. So if you're looking for a good sleeper team, I definitely think North Carolina is one that you could fill in right there. Iowa State is probably going to be the most disrespected team in the NCAA tournament just based on where they're going to be seated and quite frankly just how well they've played as a team because people just kind of don't take them seriously. They look at them as just a good defensive group that's just beating up on teams in conference in a weird way because they do play a weird style of basketball. They muck it up. They're the best defensive team in Ken Palm. That's what they do. TJ Otzelberger has really just done a brilliant job at Iowa State. But this team, in my opinion, I like them more than obviously last year's team. Last year's team was not good. But this year's team's much better. There's a reason they're going to be seated where they're at. They went and beat Houston in the Big 12 title game. They just completely locked them down. Also beat them again earlier this year. Also wins over basically everybody in the Big 12. I'm just bought in, okay? I'm just going to be honest. I really like their backcourt with Taman Lipsy and Keyshawn Gilbert, a UNLV transfer. He's just been awesome for them. I just feel 
feel like this team has shot creators that they didn't have in the past that can actually get a bucket on their own. I'm a believer. I know they certainly have their skeptics, but they definitely backed it up in the Big 12 tournament. That's for sure. They put on a defensive clinic in the entire thing. So I'm bought in. Probably not a national championship contender by any means, but they're going to give you a full 40 minutes. That's for sure. Well, Tennessee was having a great year, winning the SEC regular season title before losing in upsetting fashion to Mississippi State in their first conference tournament game. Now, they can either take two paths. One, they go down the same Rick Barnes path they always do and choke, or two, they can take this loss personally and get their act together. Now, this year's team I thought was much different than past years because of one reason, do-it-all star player Dalton Connect, a senior transfer from Northern Colorado. I expected him to be the missing offensive piece that they've needed because they quite frankly haven't had that. And before laying an egg offensively in the SEC tournament, this team was playing at a much more high tempo, fun offensive style, and Rick let Dalton cook. And I really started to believe in this team. They returned a lot of the guys from last year. You remember they have Josiah Jordan-James, Zakai Z who's healthy after tearing his ACL, Santiago Vescovi, and then they even added a transfer in Jordan Ganey, who's been pretty good. And they also have some great wins this year over like Michigan State in a secret scrimmage. They've got Wisconsin, Illinois, Florida, Kentucky, you know, all the SEC teams. That being said, they've played Purdue, Kansas, and North Carolina and lost all of them. So I was not expecting a national championship from Tennessee this year. What I was expecting is at least a second weekend berth, potentially a Final Four visit. I still believe they can do that. They just have to take that loss personally and be on a mission. I'm not going to expect expect this team to fold after already folding in their opening game in the SEC tournament. Maybe I have too much faith in Rick Barnes because apparently nobody else does. And rightfully so. I mean, he's not gotten it done the NCAA tournament. But for me personally, I still expect this team to make the second weekend. I'm buying them. And honestly, I feel like they deserve a little bit of a run. Ah, Kansas. What started out as a promising season with some big time wins over the likes of Kentucky, Tennessee, and UConn has ended up with them being the sixth seed in the Big 12 tournament, losing their opening game by 20 points to Cincinnati. Although two best players, Kevin McCullough and Michigan transfer Hunter Dickinson, were both out with injuries, while ultimately losing four of their final five games of the season. So, what does the future hold for these guys? Okay, well, if they are healthy and ready, they should be able to get things going again. The problem is, is that Kevin McCullough has been a massive unknown recently, and it's terrifying because Kansas has no bench. Now, their starting five is a massive matchup nightmare when they're all healthy due to having so much size, with Dickinson and McCuller and KJ Adams, and Johnny Furphy, the classic KU white guy that they have this year, the freshman, and they're all led by small guard Dewan Harris, who's been the starting point guard for them since like 2021. Now, if they're healthy, they're going to be a really hard team to beat because of that starting five. They honestly might have the best starting five in college basketball, but again, they have no bench and have fallen off a massive cliff recently. It's hard to bet against Bill Self. He is the best coach in college basketball at the moment, but this year's team, just as of recently, like I I've mentioned a couple of times. I mean, they've lost to nine separate Big 12 schools this year. They also got cleaned up in Maui by Marquette. So there's some major red flags. And this year's team kind of reminds me of the 2021 team in a sense where they can get a win in the tournament while everybody's kind of expecting to lose. I'm just not buying them going further than maybe a game. They're super half court reliant. They don't shoot well at all from outside. And for one final time, their injury questions are a huge red flag. Hunter Dickinson will be fine, but it's Kevin McCullough. I mean, that's their go-to score. That guy's not healthy. They're toast. So don't buy them long-term. They can definitely get a win. I think they have a good enough starting five to at least buy them a game. But when they play a big-time team, this just isn't Kansas's year. And honest to God, we need to have a conversation about Kansas being one of the more unlucky teams in college basketball. I mean, last year, Bill Self had to miss the whole tournament because he was sick. And then like the 2020 season, they were the best team in the sport and the season got canceled. So sorry, Kansas. You'll always have that 2022 national championship though. So at least you have that. Creighton is a little bit of a different team than last year. But that being said, they have a very specific approach and style that they play. So there are still a lot of similarities from last year's Elite Eight team. Now, they did lose guard Ryan Nemhard, who's at Gonzaga, and Arthur Kaluma, who went to Kansas State. But they brought in Stephen Ashworth, a guy from Utah State, and he's legitimately like a man out there because he's married and he's a pretty old guy. And this team is full of older players. They've still got Ryan Kalkbrenner down low, a complete monster, a great rim protector. They've still got Trey Alexander, an offensive weapon, a legit pro, and Baylor Shireman, one of the most fun players in college basketball to watch the Southpaw. He really could be a Kemba candidate, honestly. But that being said, this team plays a very specific style like I mentioned. They rely completely on their starters. They don't foul. They don't go really after offensive rebounds. They get back. I mean, they're the number one team in college basketball and not fouling. So they, they have an identity and they stick to it. They've got some really good wins this season. Like they beat Nebraska, Alabama. They beat, I mean, all the teams in the Big East. They beat St. John's, UConn, Marquette, you name it, they beat them. But 
They're not playing great right now. And I am a little bit concerned. It did take them a little bit to get going this season just because of the star players they lost from last year's team that was on the brink of a Final Four and bringing in those new pieces. So I definitely think this team can go on a little bit of a run because they've got such a great rim protector down low with Kalk Brenner. And this is kind of their last dance. You know, all these guys are going to be gone next year. So you got to capitalize on it. I don't think they're going to win a national championship, but they could be a very serious sleeper candidate to make the Final Four. I definitely do think last year's team won was better. I don't know if everybody agrees with that take, but I do, but that's just what I believe. And that team is on the brink of a final four. So who knows? Maybe the same thing could be in store for this group. All right, we've reached Duke and buckle up. I've got a lot to say. The days of Coach K and Zion are over. This is John Shire's second season. I thought were a much better team coming to the season because they brought back guys like Tyrese Proctor and Kyle Filipowski is still recovering from that court storming. And then Jeremy Roach, he's been there forever. He's their point guard. And even a guy like Jared McKay, Kane has been just absolute rock star for them. Despite being a guy that paints his nails, I kind of like him. Say what you want. I don't really care. That being said, this group, they're not playing their best basketball right now. And quite frankly, they've been called soft by a lot of people. And I understand that. They also have racked up a lot of losses versus the best teams they played this year. Like Arizona coming into their building and beating them. They lost to North Carolina two times. I mean, come on, they couldn't even get one. And they just have other losses that are not even good. Like against Arkansas, Georgia Tech, Pittsburgh, Wake Forest then losing North Carolina State in the ACC tournament. This team is just not as good as they were last year, honestly. And they're about to face a huge reality check heading into the NCAA tournament. Now, they can obviously turn this thing around, but I don't know, guys. I'm just not buying it. They have not finished their season well. And when it gets to the NCAA tournament, you've got a man up. You can get punched in the face pretty easily. And we kind of saw that last year when they played Tennessee. They got punched in the face. Yes, I think it got out of hand with the refs, but still, they weren't able to bounce back. And it's a lot of the same team from last year. And unlike maybe a Purdue, for example, where they got punched in the face too last year i felt like they've stepped up this year and they're actually the one laying the punch this year where with this duke group i'm just not seeing that so i would stay cautious of this duke team i understand if you want to pick them to go far in your bracket but for me i just haven't gotten around with this group i think it's a huge deal they lost to north carolina both times this year because that's their big wake up call game and Quite frankly, they didn't show up for either of those. Arizona is one of the more frustrating teams in college basketball to figure out. Tommy Lloyd is in year three at Arizona. And in my opinion, I feel like this is the best team he's had. Now, if you remember their playing style, it's the same as it's always been. They play at an insane tempo. They get up and down. They crash the glass. They're a great rebounding team. However, that being said, this team is just so frustrating to watch as of recently because of a couple things. They get lazy in games. They, for some reason in games, take the foot off the gas. They don't take things seriously sometimes, and it can lead to situations where they run into teams like Stanford, Oregon State, Washington State. They lose to them because they've done that this year. But then again, there's so much talent on this team. It leads to wins over like Wisconsin, Alabama. They went to Duke and won. They beat Michigan State. And when you look at this roster, there's a lot to like. They've got guys like Kylan Boswell, who's one of the best guards in college basketball. They've got Caleb Love, who ended up winning Pac-12 Player of the Year, transferring from North Carolina. is obviously a key factor in that national title game run they made. And they've also got guys like Jaden Bradley who transferred in from Alabama, a guy like Keisha Johnson who started for San Diego State in their national title game run last year. And then they've also still got guys like Pell Larson who's there and Omar Ballo. There is a lot to like. They're just so frustrating to watch. And in obviously the past years, we've seen Arizona just choke in the NCAA tournament, not get far. It's just hard to project what this team's going to be. I thought they would be different this year just based on how they started their season, winning a lot of those non-conference games against top competition, but we've also seen them lose to teams like Purdue and Florida Atlantic. So really, they're one of the more confusing teams and just one of those teams I cannot get a feel for. So I would say be cautious of this Arizona team just because of seeing them like last year lose to a 15 seed. And the fact that in the half court, sometimes they just don't know how to function because they want to play in transition. I do think this team's better in the half court than in past years because it feels like they have guys that can actually make plays. They've just not played well as of recently. Tommy Lloyd kind of feels like a Matt Painter, where just every year he's going to choke in the NCAA tournament after having a really good season. I don't know how to feel about this team, guys. I mean, they're really one of the more confusing teams to feel on this list because you could actually have them going pretty far in your bracket. And I can't even disagree with it because on paper, they certainly look like a team that can do that. This team gives me a headache. Oh man, oh man. I love 
this Auburn team. They are so much fun to watch. They're extremely athletic. They play at a super fast pace. They have a ton of bodies they can throw at you. And they've got a lot of dudes that can score and shoot from anywhere. They're one of the best defensive teams in college basketball. They've got a really good guard in Aiden Holloway, a kid that reclassed and it's just been awesome. They've got Janai Broom, a Ken Palm Player of the Year candidate. Got Jalen Williams, you know, KD Johnson still there. Got a whole bunch of other dudes. I just really love this group. There's so much fun to watch. I think this is actually the best playing Auburn team I've seen in Bruce Pearl's time there. Like even over that 2019 team, I thought that 2019 team really just kind of caught fire towards the end of the season. I mean, this team's been good all year. Watch out for Auburn. They're going to be dynamite in this NCAA tournament. I think they are a very clear candidate to go to the final four. We've got a lot of really good players. I could honestly spend the most time on Kentucky in this video, but I'm not going to do that to you guys because honestly, they're not that interesting. Yes, they've got a lot of young talent. They actually won the Global Jam over the summer. And Coach Cal, he went with a younger team this year. Yes, he brought back the five stars. It's not an older Kentucky. They've got a lot of youth, whether it's guys like Rob Dillingham, who was just awesome. Reed Shepard, who you're going to hear a lot about or DJ Wagner, Justin Edwards. I mean, they're loaded with them. And then they've got Antonio Reeves, who is their go-to guy, their leader. And it felt like this was like a turnaround season. The vibes just felt like Kentucky was back this year. I will say this. Coach Cal has refused to start his two best players, Rob Dillingham and Reed Shepard. They both come off the bench and it just feels like they start games slow. Then they're kind of playing catch up the whole time. They're not a good defensive group. They are the best three-point shooting team in college basketball in Ken Palm. They play at a very fast tempo. I, I, I just don't know how to feel about these guys. This is a team that I want to see when uh, I actually kind of miss Kentucky being one of the dominant teams in college basketball and it would be kind of refreshing in my opinion to see Kentucky back at the top of the sport but guys there's just too many red flags with this group heading into the NCAA tournament no teams ever won a national championship when they lost their first conference tournament game so it sucks to have to write them off but you know what? They've had all season to get better, and it just feels like they're not. Baylor kind of feels like a poor man's version of their 2019-20 season. They're one of the best three-point shooting teams in college basketball. They can put up points in a hurry. They've proven that. But over the season, they're just an atrocious defensive group, and I feel like that's just going to come back and bite them. Now, they have some great wins. They've beaten Auburn. They've beat Florida. Then they beat basically everybody in the Big 12. But they also have a lot of losses versus a lot of teams, despite three of those actually being in overtime. And I kind of like their roster. You know, they've got really good guards. They've got Jacoby Walter. He's outstanding. They've got Jalen Bridges, a West Virginia transfer. And it's all led by Ray J. Dennis, a transfer from Toledo. They also have Jaden Nunn, a VCU transfer. Langston Love, who tore his ACL last year. But my problem with this team, again, is just defensively. So I would be very cautious of this Baylor team. I don't necessarily think they're that bad, but my goodness, don't play defense. So Alabama is one of those teams that you definitely probably want to fade heading into the tournament. They lost four of their final six games. And despite genuinely one of the best offenses in the sport and playing at one of the fastest possession rates in college basketball, this team refuses and I mean refuses to play defense. They have a huge lack of rim protection to defend at a high level down low anyway. They don't guard. They are also one of the worst teams at fouling. They played Florida pretty recently in the regular season, and Florida went to the line 46 freaking times. How the heck is that even possible? Now, you've got a really great point guard in Mark Sears, but like I said, they're plummeting towards the end of the year. This is a very easy one that you can just look at and kind of fade, and you're more than likely probably going to be right. Shout out Trisha for some stats on this one. So Texas Tech hired North Texas head coach Grant McCann Caslin, who was in his first season at Tech, got the ship right after a really disappointing year in 2023. Now, the Red Raiders don't play at the slowest pace in college basketball like his teams did at North Texas, but this team, in fact, actually is a really good offensive group, which has actually been really surprising to me considering when he was hired. Now, the downside is, is that in conference, Tech has really struggled versus teams that have guards that defend at a high level, losing to Houston two times in Iowa State. This team is led by their star guard, Pop Isaacs, who is a high-level scorer and their go-to guy that they really need to be be good to be productive so the deal is i think they are good enough to survive a game because i trust their coach to make adjustments in the game and they're pretty good when it comes to playing teams that are not good defensively they're going to have to really improve on the defensive end to go far south carolina is back in the ncaa tournament for the first time since 2017 and in his second season lamont paris has actually just done a fantastic job there nobody expected this team to be an ncaa tournament team and they're not just going to be an NCAA tournament team. They're actually going to get a pretty decent seed. Now, when you look at their roster, they're filled with a lot of transfers from different programs. They're led by Michi Johnson from Ohio State, Talon Cooper, who transferred in from Moorhead State. And they play a style of basketball where they really are slow tempo-wise, one of the slowest in college basketball. Their backcourt is super old. They know how to play with each other. They've beaten all the good teams in the SEC, like Kentucky, Tennessee, and Florida. I'm definitely not expecting them to go on some sort of crazy run, just because I don't believe they're 
are more talented than a lot of other teams, but you know what? They're a really good story. This is a program that's just not been good at men's basketball. So for them to have a season like this, hats off to them. They've earned this opportunity. Maybe they can make something out of it. They've got older guards. Personally, I'm not expecting anything, maybe a game, but overall, this is just one of the good stories in the tournament. This might be random, but St. Mary's is one of the most fascinating teams heading into the tournament. They started off their season three and five. They looked dead in the water. They were kind of an embarrassment. Let's just be honest here. They had huge expectations coming into this year. I mean, last year, if it wasn't for an injury to Alex Dukas, I mean, this team actually was kind of in the game versus UConn in the NCAA tournament, but he hurt his back and then the wheels fell off, but they brought back a lot of the same team from last year. You know, guys like Aiden Mahaney, obviously Alex Dukas, Mitchell Saxon, and then Augustus Marshallonis. I mean, he has stepped up big time for them. He's been their best player. Finally took that next step they've been waiting for. And since December 5th, this team has only lost two games. They lost to Gonzaga. They also lost to Missouri State. So they do have some bad losses. Let's just be honest here. But this team has absolutely figured out their playing style. They're playing so much better as of lately. They won the West Coast Conference. They beat Gonzaga in the title game. They're one of the best rebounding teams on both ends. I mean, they are top three on both offensive and defensive rebounding on Ken Palm. Nobody else is like that. They play at one of the slowest tempos. They defend really well. They don't have a bench, so keep that in mind. They really stick to their starting five, but this starting five has definitely taken a huge step. I'm buying the St. Mary's team. I think they're very clearly the best team in the West Coast Conference. I feel like they really figured out what their playing style is finally. They started playing so much better towards the end of the season. I'm a big believer in this group. All right, Randy Bennett's got to have a run in him sometime eventually. So go capitalize on it, Randy. We've all been waiting. And if we're going to talk about St. Mary's, let's just get right into Gonzaga. Despite getting Andrew Nimhard from Creighton this year in the transfer portal, the Zags are not the juggernaut of the past that we've seen. This year's team has racked up a lot of losses. They've definitely improved towards the end of the season. Kind of started out pretty rough for them. In fact, they're there were very clearly out of the NCAA tournament picture for a very long time during the regular season, but they finally got their act together. They're not deep at all. They have one of the shortest benches in college basketball. So again, they ride with their guys, Andrew Nimhard, Nolan Hickman from last year's team, Dusty Stromer, Anton Watson, if you remember him, he's still there. Graham E.K., the transfer from Wyoming. I'm not a hater of this Gonzaga team. I think they're definitely good enough to win a game, but I'm just going to go out here and say this right now. I'm not picking them to win the national championship again. So that's Gonzaga this year for you guys. Again, not a bad basketball team, just not a great basketball team. Shaka Smart had another outstanding season at Marquette. This team, vintage Shaka, you know, they play that Havoc defense. They're very active. They've got guards that attack you. Honest to God, this might be one of the most connected defensive teams that is in college basketball. They remind me a lot of Houston in a lot of ways because of just how well of a starting five they have that works well together. You know, they've got the movement, the cutting, the passing. This team is really on another level and I'm pretty bought in on this Marquette team. Honestly, felt like last year's team, their season kind of abruptly ended. Felt like they had a little bit more of a run in them. We'll see with this team because they currently have some injury problems like Tyler Kolick. He's hurt. We'll see if he's really at full strength for the NCAA tournament. I believe he will be. But some of the other guys on this team like Cam Jones, Oso Iguodaro, Stevie Mitchell, he's really stepped up for them. You know, I just, I really like a lot of the guys on this team. I feel like they play super well together. They maximize what they're good at. They're not a great rebounding team at either end, but I feel like they've got real bucket getters. They all kind of know their roles. They kind of know where to be. They play super well together. I'm I'm just a big believer in this team. So that's Marquette. New Mexico went on a dynamite run in the Mountain West Conference Tournament. We're going to get a six bid Mountain West. And they won four games in four days, beating the likes of Boise State, Colorado State, and San Diego State. And it was really all led by their star guard, Jalen House. And this team's full of a lot of dudes. They've got Jamal Mashburn, they've got JT Toppin, they've got Nelly Jr. Joseph. They play at extremely high tempo and they're led by Rick Patino's son, Richard Patino. Now their season's been a real roller coaster. But when Jalen House gets going, this team is really, really good. And I'm glad they're going to make the NCAA tournament. Honest to God, New Mexico has one of the best fan bases in college basketball. They really showed out in the Mountain West tournament. I'm going to be cheering for them actually in this NCAA tournament just because I love the vibe. They're a huge sleeper Final Four candidate it and rightfully so we'll see if they still have a little bit of juice left in them after winning the mountain west tournament i don't know i'm kind of bought in they're kind of chaotic they certainly could have an off night and just completely lay an egg as you can see when they're playing their best they can beat anybody
Well, off of a national championship game appearance last year, San Diego State brought back a lot of the same team. Whether it's their backcourt of Darian Trammell and Lamont Butler, both guards from last year's team, Micah Parrish, he's still there. It was Jaden Ledee who really stepped up for them. He was actually a candidate in the Ken Palm Player of the Year race. He's just been a rock for them down low. Nobody really saw that coming. But yeah, it's still the same old San Diego State type of basketball. They're just a really solid defensive group. They kind of track analytically like they did last year. They actually have a win over Gonzaga. They have a win over St. Mary's and they basically have wins over everybody in the Mountain West. Take that for what it's worth. I think they're definitely good enough to get a game. We've obviously seen them before. At least pull off a game in the NCAA tournament. I think they're very capable of doing that. I'm definitely not expecting another national championship game run. That was pretty crazy. So would not expect that. But I still think they're good enough. I don't I don't think San Diego State's that bad of a basketball team. I could spend a very long time on Dayton. But I'm not going to do that to you guys. So I'm going to try to keep this as short as possible here. This team had aspirations of getting up to a two seed. But... They've really fallen off a cliff towards the end of the season. They obviously lost their first game in the A-10 tournament. They just don't make adjustments in games. They take the ball up the court really slow. They have a lot of really good guards. They're one of the best three-point shooting teams in college basketball, and they're all led by their star center, Deron Holmes, one of the player of the year candidates in college basketball. He's just been a rock star for them. Thank God he stayed. Honestly, I'm just glad they made the NSA tournament. I don't know. I'm trying not to have my expectations too high here. I would love to see them go on a run, but watching this team as of recently, they just don't have the big time wins that, that all of the good teams have in college basketball. I'm not going to complain. I'm just happy they're making the tournament, but still. There were expectations that just have not been met, in my opinion. I was really expecting more from this group. Hopefully they don't lose their first game. As a fan of them, I feel like that's just what's going to happen. So I'm, I'm just not buying them long term. Take me back a couple months ago, though. I would have had this team as a Final Four candidate, but I, I just can't get there anymore. Illinois is one of the tougher teams to figure out. They obviously went on a little bit of a run in the Big Ten Conference Tournament, and it really feels like this team is starting to play their best basketball. They're an insanely good offensive group. They also have a starting five that's full of a lot of length. They're the 10th oldest team in college basketball. They've got four seniors, and three of them literally played college basketball in the year of 2019. They also don't start anybody under 6'6", and it feels like Brad Underwood desperately needs a run in March. Problem is, they don't have a true point guard. And a huge red flag is they just don't play defense. They've got some really good wins. They beat Florida Atlantic. They beat Michigan State. They beat, all, you know, all the good teams in the Big Ten. But they've also lost to teams like Marquette and Tennessee and Purdue. It's just there's a huge red flag with that defense. I really do like their players. They've got Marcus Domask, who's been really good for them. They've got TJ Shannon. He was at Texas Tech. Also got Quincy Guerrier from Syracuse. Ty Rogers has stepped up. Coleman Hawkins, obviously, that's he's obviously the glue for this team. The problem is, is that do I trust their team? I, you know, it, it's hard to say. They definitely showed a lot of improvements in the Big Ten tournament. Makes me feel like they actually can compete in March Madness, but they have to be locked in defensively. That's the problem. I do think their size and athleticism is a matchup nightmare that just teams can't compete against. They're going to have to prove it defensively for a run in the NCAA tournament. So buyers beware. There's a lot to like, but again, buyers beware. Oh man, this might be the most complicated team to talk about in college basketball. Michigan State came into this season with massive expectations. I mean, they were a lot of people's potential national champion, and rightfully so. They brought back a great backcourt with Tyson Walker, AJ Hogard, and Jade Nakins. But my goodness, this team has just not played well at all throughout the season. They've had no consistency. They've had some very bad losses. They've lost like five of their past seven games. They're just not playing well. I'm not expecting you know, with March, you can expect a crazy run from somebody. On paper, you would think Michigan State would be that team. I, I'm just not buying it. And there's rightfully no reason to believe that. It's starting to feel like Tom Izzo might be washed. They've played a lot of great competition this season, and really their only great win was against Baylor and Illinois, and both those teams just refused to play defense. So I, I'm just not buying this group. There were huge expectations coming into this year for these guys, and just quite frankly, they've not delivered on any of them. And if we're going to talk about another team that's just been completely disappointed this season. It's Florida Atlantic. I mean, these guys barely made the NCAA tournament after, honestly, they should have been playing that national championship game last year. They lost at the buzzer. That shot didn't go in. They were going to win. And they brought back a lot of the same team from last year with guards John L. Davis and Elijah Martin and Nick Boyd and Jalen Gaffney and then obviously Vlad Golden down low. It's weird because, again, they have like the best continuity rating in college basketball. These guys know how to play with each other. They've proven it last year, but 
they've got some bad losses. I mean, they lost to Bryant, they lost to Florida Gulf Coast, and all of their games in the American have been close. They lost at Temple in the American Conference Tournament. Again, they've not flipped the switch. I'm done holding out hope for these guys. They're not a good defensive group at all. They're pretty good offensively, but just defensively, my goodness, they're just bad. And I, I just don't get it. I, I really don't. I, I had huge expectations for these guys coming into this year. I was a believer. I know people were saying they barely beat Memphis last year. And I, I get that, but it's just a really disappointing year for Florida Atlantic. I'm just not buying this team flipping a switch in March. They've just not given anyone any signs to believe that that's going to happen. Washington State is one of the best stories in college basketball. They're led by Miles Rice, who actually had cancer last year and has come back and been their best player, honestly. There's just a lot of good stories with this group. I don't think they've made the NCAA tournament since 2008. So it's nice to see them back. You know, they play through the post. They're a very tall team. They're actually the second tallest team in college basketball. They slow the pace of the game down. They defend the heck out of you. And they're really good at getting second chance points. So there's really nothing flashy about this group. They don't have like the big names in college basketball, but they're the exact type of team that's hard to play in a tournament style setting. I'm definitely not expecting a massive run out of these guys, but I'm actually really excited to see Washington State in the NCAA tournament for the first time, basically in forever. BYU in their first season in the Big 12 had a great year. These guys rose to the challenge of joining a new conference and were really, really good, especially on offense. This is a really good offensive group. They've got seven guys that average nine points. You know, no one player sticks out over the other. Actually, I believe their best player comes off the bench, honestly. But this group has a lot of good wins. They beat San Diego State. They beat Iowa State. They beat Baylor. They beat Kansas. They played a really fast tempo. They've got good spacing on offense. You know, they're pretty fun. I feel like they struggle against teams that are good offensively. So that's something I would worry about. But they're one of the bigger teams in college basketball. They're great at rebounding at both ends. And they went into the Big 12 and proved it. So hats off to them for having a really, really solid year. No matter who is coaching here, Craig Smith, Ryan Odom, and now Danny Sprinkle, who was at Montana State, Utah State is just always winning. They didn't even return a player who scored for them last year. But this team has been great. Darius Brown's a really good guard for them. And they're led by their great center great Osibor. Now they're not a good three-point shooting team, but they're really good at defending the three. They've been great all year. They won the Mountain West regular season. I really worry about their outside shooting, so if you can control them in the paint, you definitely can beat them. But hats off to Danny Sprinkle. He's just done a brilliant job considering the circumstances. Oh wow, Wisconsin. What a tricky team to figure out. They started off their season really well, and then they were terrible. I mean, these guys from February 1st to like March 10th, they looked dead in the water. And for having an older team with guys like Chucky Hepper and AJ Store, Tyler Wall, and Steven Crowell, it was just really confusing. But in a tournament style season, Setting. For some reason, Greg Gard just got it turned on. Maybe it's the slow tempo. I don't know. I really don't even still know how to feel about this team. This was a team that I had written off completely like a couple weeks ago. And then now here we are. I, I, I don't know how to feel again about these guys. I, I do trust their players. Like I like Chucky Hepburn a lot. AJ Store is really good. They kind of figured out how to play with each other finally. And nothing scarier in March than momentum, guys. I mean, honest to God, there really is nothing scarier than that. We'll see if they still have a few more tricks up their sleeve. Again, slow tempo go for defensive rebounds. That's kind of their MO. Just a really tough team to figure out. They could go pretty far just because, again, felt like earlier in the year they had the potential to do that, and they're finally playing their best basketball again. Florida is one of the hottest teams in college basketball. Todd Golden has done a really good job with this group. They brought in a lot of transfers. They've got big guards. They're elite offensively. I mean, they get after you on the offensive glass. Now, it's going to be interesting because their center actually broke his leg in the SEC championship game. I really do like a lot of their players like Tyree Samuel, Zion Poland's been really good, Walter Clayton. They've got big veteran guards. They're just a really, really fun offensive group. It felt like they were really peaking at the right time. We'll see if that injury really impacts them because they're such a good offensive rebounding team, but I trust their guards. I think they're a really, really good Cinderella candidate. And now they have somebody that they're actually playing for because their center went down. So it'll be interesting to see what this Florida team does in the NCAA tournament. North Carolina State was 17 and 14 on March 9th. Now they are 22 and 14, winning five games in the ACC conference tournament, beating the likes of Duke, Virginia, North Carolina to make the NCAA tournament. This is one of the hottest teams in college basketball. They're also a really older group, and this was not a good season for them. I mean, they made the NCAA tournament last year, but it looked like they really had all the wheels falling off. But big body DJ Burns just went on a rampage, and they've also got a bunch of other good players like DJ Horn and Casey Morsell. They're just playing some of the best basketball right now. They're super locked into what they're doing. Maybe they could be a Oregon State type of team from 2021 that went on a little bit of a run. DJ Burns is just such a matchup nightmare for a lot of teams, and there's nothing scarier than a team playing with some momentum and North Carolina State is not fearing anybody. They ran through all the good teams in the ACC. So 
I, I really don't know what to project with these guys. They're going to get probably a really low seed. So watch out for North Carolina State. They're playing some really good basketball right now. Well, Oregon are the winners of the final Pac-12 tournament. I still don't really know how to feel about this team. They did not really play that well in conference. But you know what Dana Altman does? He aligns Rubik's Cubes, as John Rothstein says. This team's just got a whole bunch of pieces that have not been playing together for very long. They still have Nefali Dante down low. That guy's literally been playing at Oregon since 2019. They didn't really even go on that big of a rampage in the Pac-12 tournament. I don't really even know how to feel about Oregon. They're one of those teams I just was not expecting to make the NCAA tournament, but yet here they are. That being said, they're probably going to get a low seed. So, and Dana Altman, I feel like he never goes empty handed in the NCAA tournament. It feels like he always gets one game. Northwestern is going to be back in the NCAA tournament with their star guard, Boo Booey. And he's one of the most explosive players in college basketball. Again, these guys kind of feel like the Warriors because they just shoot so many threes. I mean, they're a top five team on Ken Palm and three point shooting. They played a super slow pace. They've got a ton of older experienced players they don't turn the ball over they've got a lot of really good wins so when they can get hot they can win any game not expecting them to go to a final four or anything because i felt like last year's team was much better but i definitely think they can at least get a game in they did lose to chicago state this year somehow that was a horrible loss but you have a guard like boo booey you can win a game in the NCAA tournament he can absolutely will you into at least one i've kind of got a little bit of a man crush on this mississippi state team they are a super solid defensive group I feel like they're much better than they were last year and that team lost in the first four. And the reason why is because of freshman guard Josh Hubbard, who is just a rock star. Gotta love that kid. And this team is full of seniors. Everybody they start a senior besides Josh Hubbard. They've obviously still got Tolu Smith, DJ Jeffries, Cam Matthews, Sean Davis. And it looked like they were playing much better basketball, especially in the SEC tournament. They're not a good offensive group, but what they are is a really, really solid defensive group. Just having a guy like Josh Hubbard. Yes, he's really young, but... I feel like he's the type of guard that can really take over a game. We'll see if he's able to do that long term for these guys. I feel like they do rely on him a lot. So, and that's asking a lot because he's a freshman. So I would stay a little cautious, but they're one of those teams that's going to muck it up. Chris Jans, he's going to get after his guys. They're going to be tough. They'll give you a full 40 minutes. So keep an eye on them, especially against potentially like a two seed. Fred Hoiberg has finally done it. He got Nebraska into the NCAA tournament. Finally, this guy was hired in like 2019 and it has taken him a very long time to get here, but he's finally done it. It's all led by their star senior guard, Kisei Toamanga. This guy is the Steph Curry of the Big Ten. He has just been on a rampage he went off in the big 10 tournament and they're really starting to play in my opinion their best basketball as of recently they're super fun to watch offensively they finally cracked the code up there nebraska ball it's awesome they've got a lot of good wins this season yes they're not a great away team because they're really known for being a home team because pinnacle bank you just don't walk in there they've just got a lot of older guys and this is really their last chance here so make the most of this opportunity i'm definitely gonna be cheering for them i know tony patelis is happy that nebraska is in the NSA tournament he loves fred hoiberg well texas certainly had a very interesting season especially if you threw the horns down on rodney terry i don't recommend doing that he does not like that but that being said the Texas Longhorns do have a really good backcourt. They have Max Azemus, if you remember him from Oral Roberts. They've still got Tyrese Hunter. They've still got Dylan Mitchell, Dylan DeSue, Brock Cunningham. You know, a lot of the guys from the past couple of years, but they just don't have any great wins. They've just not been great all year. They're not a good defensive group either. I, I there's just, I, I can't buy into this team. And I want to because I do like their backcourt a lot. They've just not proven anything to me this year. They can beat up on like a bad team, but uh, they're just not going any further than that, honestly. Boise State is back in the NCAA tournament and I, I, I just can't buy into this team anymore. I have been burnt by Boise State so many times. They still have Tyson Dagenhart. They still got Max Rice, who looks like Dream. Seriously, I've been burned by this team every single year. I feel like I try to trust them, whether that was in 2022 against Memphis or even last year when they played Northwestern. I'm done. I'm, I'm picking against them. Colorado State had started off really well. They were 9-0. They had wins over like Washington, Colorado, and even Creighton. But it was during Mountain West play. They just had a lot of really close losses, a lot of heartbreak. They started to turn around, actually. They've won four of their past five games, losing in the Mountain West Conference Championship. Nico Medved, I mean, he's got his guys getting to the rim. That's kind of their offense. Their guards drive the hoop. They still are led by Isaiah Stevens, their star guard. Actually, start all five seniors. So I do like them of the Mountain West teams. I, I like them a little bit more than some of the others. And it's nice to actually see them make the NCAA tournament again, because in 2022, they played the first game and they were out. So... I always kind of felt bad about that. Well, Nevada is back in the NCAA tournament again, led by Steve Alford. This team is a really, really good offensive group, actually. And they've got some pretty good wins. They actually won a non-conference tournament. They beat TCU while they were there. And since February 1st, they've only lost two games. So 
They're really playing their best basketball right now. I like their players like Keenan Blackshear, Gerard Lucas, who was on that Oregon State Elite Eight team, and Hunter McIntosh. I like their pieces. We'll see if they do anything in the NCAA tournament. Last year, they played in the first four and they lost instantly. I think this year's team is much better than last year's team. There's a lot of mystery with this group. There's a lot of mystery with the whole Mountain West in general, a conference that continually comes up short in the NCAA tournament. So just keep that in mind when you're looking through all the Mountain West teams. I know I'm saying this on the Nevada one, but still, their offense will definitely keep them in the game. Ah, Clemson, what a fascinating team. I mean, these guys have beaten UAB. They beat Boise State, Alabama, South Carolina, TCU, North Carolina. I mean, they've beat everybody. They've got a lot of really good wins. They finally made the NCAA tournament again. I do like a lot of their players like Chase Hunter. I like PJ Hall. I like Joe Girard. But they've also got some pretty bad losses like against Notre Dame, Boston College, Georgia Tech, Virginia Tech, Miami. They were not good this year. Even lost to Memphis. They're one of those teams that's going to make the NCAA tournament. We'll see if they can win a game. Feels like Brad Barnell has just been there forever. I, I don't know how he's still there. They're one of the taller teams in college basketball. They're a really old team. So I expect their guys to be able to get a game out, out of this. If not, I mean, it's, it's, it's a pretty disappointing season, even if they did make the NCAA tournament, honestly. TCU was back in the NCAA tournament again. Honestly, props to Jamie Dixon. I think this is three straight years they've made the NCAA tournament. You know, TCU is a program that never made the NCAA tournament before he got there, so he's continually got them back into the tournament. I really liked last year's team a lot. They don't have Mike Miles anymore, but they brought in Jameer Nelson Jr. to replace him. They've also still got Micah Peavy, Emmanuel Miller. Avery Anderson transferred in from Oklahoma State. He's been in college basketball forever. I definitely think they're good enough to get a game in the NCAA tournament. They weren't necessarily playing that great in Big 12 play. They did enough to buy themselves into the NCAA tournament. They actually really haven't even had that great of a season, to be completely honest. They racked up a lot of losses, but they still made the NCAA tournament. I feel like their starting five should at least win a game. That's what I feel like on paper. Well, we'll see if they actually do that. Colorado was really starting to play some of their best basketball towards the end of the season. Before losing in the Pac-12 championship game, this is one of the best offensive teams in college basketball. They rank fifth on Ken Palm in three-point shooting percentage. They go after defensive rebounds. KJ Simpson snuck his way in on the Ken Palm Player of the Year award list. And they're just filled with a lot of seniors. They've got Tristan Da Silva. They've got Eddie Lampkin, who was at TCU. They got Cody Williams, the freshman, who was a five-star. This is going to be a very dangerous team that's probably going to be playing in the first four. So watch out for Colorado. They really started to play some of their best basketball towards the end of the season, and they finally figured out how to play as a group. Texas A&M has a really good backcourt with Wade Taylor, one of the best players in college basketball, and Tyrese Radford. They are the best rebounding team in college basketball on Ken Palm. They've just lost a lot of games. They actually started to play better really towards the end of the season once March got here. Their offensive numbers are just atrocious. They really rely on Wade Taylor to be their scorer. And I also feel like I've been burnt by Buzz Williams so many times at Texas A&M. I, I just have a hard time buying into this group. Uh, I just don't expect them to go very far. Uh, hi, this is Cole from the future. And uh, Virginia made the NCAA tournament. I did not expect that. And this is not a team I want to watch. Uh, you know, they, they play a very disgusting brand of basketball. I was actually surprised they really made the NCAA tournament. I had to make an adjustment. That Okay, so they play at the slowest tempo in college basketball. You know, it's the Virginia teams of old, okay? But it's not a national championship contender. They've still got Reese Beekman. I, I don't know what to say with this group. I mean, they beat Texas A&M. They actually beat Florida earlier in the year. That probably saved them into the NCAA tournament a little bit, getting that win. Uh, I, I'm just, I'm stunned here. I, this is not a this is not a good basketball team. <laughs> Maybe they can win their first four game because again, they play such a gross band of basketball. They could probably slow down whoever they play. But I, well, as an A-10 fan, I certainly did not see this one coming because Duquesne is going to the NCAA tournament for the first time since 1977. Keith Dambrot, he's, he's finally done it. He took Duquesne to the NCAA tournament. I, I did not expect this to happen. I, I really do like their backcourt with Jimmy Clark and Day Day Grant. They're on a seven game winning streak. This team is going to shut you down defensively. That's what they do. I was so frustrated watching just and lay an egg to them in the, in the A-10 tournament. I'm really happy for Keith Dambrot and actually really happy for Duquesne fans. Uh, I, I, I'm so excited to see them in the NCAA tournament just because I never thought this was going to happen, even though I believe that all of the teams from the Atlantic 10 shouldn't be in the NCAA tournament because the league was just a complete disaster this year. But here we are. This is March and Duquesne's going to the NCAA tournament. They've got a really good backcourt, like I said. So I, I, I don't expect this team to win a game in the NCAA tournament, but I'm going to have to pull for them. <laughs> UAB is a fascinating team because in their first year in the American Athletic Conference, they, they go on a little bit of a Cinderella run and win the conference tournament. And I feel like the past year's teams, especially the past two years, those teams were much better than this year's team. However, this year's team is dancing and they actually have some pretty good wins. They actually beat Maryland, they beat Drake, and they lost by one point to Clemson. So they're going to be a tough out for whoever they play. They're led by their best two guards, Eric Gaines and Alejandro Vasquez. They definitely weren't the best team in the American this 
year, but you know what? They earned their right to be here, but it would not surprise me at all if they were able to win a game. Yale stole the Ivy League title game at the buzzer, beating Brown. This team plays a super slow tempo style of basketball. They actually led Kansas at halftime earlier this year, and this team's trying to redeem themselves from last year when they were upset in their conference tournament, and Princeton ended up getting that spot in March. But James Jones, his teams don't turn the ball over. They get after you on the defensive rebounds. And as always, the Ivy League teams are pests. Something to know is their starting lineup is all over 6'4". They want to control the pace of the game. And if you let them do that, they can absolutely beat you. I didn't think they were the best team in the Ivy League. I thought that was very clearly Princeton. But they ended up getting the spot in March. So just always stay cautious of the Ivy League schools. My spirit animal, Big Red, is back in the NCAA tournament. Now, Western Kentucky plays at the fastest tempo in college basketball, and nobody goes faster than them. They're going to turn the game into a track meet, and Steve Lutz in his first season at Western Kentucky is only in his third season as a Division I head coach, and his past two were at Texas A&M Corpus Christi, where he made the NCAA tournament. He's a really good coach. They also play pretty chaotic. They're going to get a low seed, considering the Conference USA is a pretty well-known conference, but I think they really beat up on a bad conference, especially to win their conference tournament. They have a pretty fun backcourt, by the way, with Don McHenry and Brandon Newman, who was at Purdue. So I'm not fully bought on this team pulling off an upset just because of how chaotic they are at times, but I'm just happy to see Big Red in the NCAA tournament. Grand Canyon is back in the NCAA tournament for the third time in four years. This is by far their best team that they've had. They have a lot of length in their starting five. They can overwhelm you. They really get after you. Also, their fan base is nuts, and they will travel. They crash the offensive glass. They defend like crazy. They even beat San Diego State this year and went toe-to-toe -to -toe with South Carolina for most of that game. So they are not a team that you want to see in your bracket, and that's not something I'm going to just say about everybody. They are going to bring it. They're pretty electric, and this will be their first chance to really win an NCAA tournament game in their 10th season of Division I basketball. Akron has a lot of the same team from 2022 that made the NCAA tournament and actually almost beat UCLA. Now, this is an older group. They play great defense. They're going to run you off the three-point line. They're going to muck the game up. That's what John Gross does. They lost to Utah State by three, and that's a pretty good team. Now, they still have a lot of the same guys from that team, like Ali Ali and Enrique Freeman. I definitely think they play the style of basketball where it's going to be interesting for the whole game. So I don't think anybody's just going to run them out of the gym because that's just not the style of basketball they play so keep an eye out on them and the matchup that they get the peacocks are back but this team is much different than that 2022 team led by second year head coach basir mason the peacocks were nowhere near the best team in the mac but they went on a little bit of a cinderella run in their conference tournament winning three very close games to sneak in now i'd like to thank the king of the mac sam fetterman for giving me some good information i wouldn't have noticed this but he says this team is as connected as that 2022 team which honest to god might be the most connected college basketball team i've ever seen that being said it's actually scary if you look at their stats from this year comparing that 2022 team because they're so similar in a lot of categories especially defensively and that's where they really showed out in the NCAA tournament was they put on a defensive clinic in 2022 now I'm not going to pick them for the upset but man it is hard to bet against the Peacocks in March Grambling State has made the NCAA tournament for the first time ever now this team is coming out of the SWAC you know the conference that has Texas Southern basically every year make it and then they get sent to the first four so with Grambling, I'm expecting that. I'm just going to be honest, not expecting an upset here. This team went 16 and 16 this season. I will say it's great that they made the NCAA tournament like they've never made it before. So hats off to them. They played a lot of good teams this year, but none of those games were close at all. So just not expecting the upset here. Let's just keep this one short. Howard has made the NCAA tournament again, winning the Mid-Eastern Athletic Conference. Now, when you look at this group, they're actually a top 20 three-point shooting team on Ken Palm, and they're really good at getting offensive rebounds. So they can definitely make a game pretty interesting. They actually have some tight games. They actually lost to Georgia Tech by three, and they took Cincinnati to overtime. Those aren't bad basketball teams. And they also have Seth Towns, who, if you remember him, he's basically been in college basketball forever. So for a projected like 16 seed, they might be able to make things pretty interesting due to their high volume of threes. I'm not going to be picking them for the upset, but if they have a hot night of shooting, they might be able to make things pretty interesting for a little bit. This is probably the craziest story in the NCAA tournament. Long Beach State head coach 
Dan Munson was a lame duck head coach because he was going to be relieved of his duties after the college basketball season ended. And Long Beach State went on a Cinderella run in the Big West Conference Tournament, winning three games in three days and clinching a spot in the NCAA Tournament. I don't know how this is possible, but that's college basketball for you. Now, he has been there forever, and they've only made the NCAA Tournament, I believe, one time under him. We'll see if that good momentum can get them anywhere. This team actually beat Michigan and Southern California this year, so they've got some pretty good wins. I don't know. Maybe that's the magic that you need with a March Madness type of team. Maybe Long Beach State could go on and win another game. That would actually just be insane. Hats off to Dan Munson. Well-deserved. Really one of the best stories in the NCAA tournament and something you just don't see in any other sport. McNeese State had a strong-ass turnaround in Will Wade's first season, having a 19-win improvement from last year and going 30-3 and this season, which actually ties the biggest turnaround ever in college basketball history. The Cowboys are going to be a red-hot Cinderella candidate and honestly rightfully so because of their havoc brand of basketball where they try to force turnovers are a very high energy team and they also have four starters that shoot 40 percent from three so they definitely have the makeup of what you want from a giant killer type of team they're also a top 10 team on ken palm at shooting threes and forcing turnovers again their style is exactly what matches a upset potential type of team this team is full of dudes that transferred from high major programs now time will tell if they're ready to play a top program in the tournament because they have not played a great schedule, but they're going to be a very trendy upset pick and rightfully so. Keep your eyes out on the Cowboys and especially if they play a team that has been struggling as of lately. Started from the bottom, now they're here again. Yes, we've been saying this three of the past four years. Drake, once again in the NCAA tournament led by Tucker DeVries, son of the coach Darian DeVries. This team actually ranks higher than any of the past Drake teams on Ken Palm. They played in a very tough Missouri Valley beat Indiana state everybody's cinderella darling two times and when it comes to this team just like past years they're the number one defensive rebounding team on ken palm so they have a very specific style of basketball they like to play and if their shots are falling like they did in the missouri valley championship game this team will pull off an upset however the issue is is that in past years they've just had bad matchups or they just haven't played to their full potential but this year third time's the charm right boy am i happy to see james madison make the tournament because they started their season with a massive win win over Michigan State in their opening game and they just felt like a team that if they were to make the NCAA tournament they could pull off an upset and they're currently riding the nation's longest winning streak actually the most wins in all of college basketball at this moment with 31 wins now the Dukes are one of the oldest teams in college basketball and are one of the best teams at defending the three-point shot on Ken Palm and their offense can be pretty explosive at times led by Terrence Edwards they haven't beaten incredible competition over the season besides the Michigan State game which still lives in my head rent free it's done that all year but this will make for a very trendy upset pick for round one four years ago Bucky McMillan was coaching high school basketball and now he has a team that is high flying fast pace and they're one of the best offensive shooting teams in the nation now Samford plays a very specific style of basketball they play at one of the fastest tempos in college basketball they have the third most bench minutes in college basketball and they are top 20 in three-point percentage and two-point percentage on Ken Palm now this playing style leads to them forcing a lot of turnovers and they play a a lot of havoc style basketball they throw a lot of bodies at you now that being said yes they throw a lot of bodies at you but they are one of the smallest teams in college basketball so their matchup will be very dependent on who they play and the style of basketball the other team plays now, they kind of remind me of fairly dickinson from last year because they play that kind of style of basketball but that being said sanford played purdue in their season opener and got absolutely destroyed so we will see on if they can pull off an upset or not but their style of basketball is very hard to prepare for so they are going to be a extremely tough out for whoever they play all right well vermont congrats you're back yet again in the nca tournament are you going to actually win a game this year for once you know probably not this team plays the exact same style of basketball that is the extremely slow pace they don't turn the ball over they don't go after offensive rebounds and they crash the glass defensively i honestly believe the past year's teams were better than this year's team in fact colgate this year beat Vermont. So if you're going to go with a Cinderella candidate, I would honestly go with Colgate over Vermont. I don't know. I've just tried to trust this team too many times in the past and they've always let me down. Sorry, Jake Marsh. Moorhead State won the Ohio Valley Conference by playing a super slow tempo style of basketball. Now their coach Preston Spalding is really good at finding talent and winning consistently. I mean, going back to like 2021, that team had Janai Broom and Talon Cooper, but this year's team, I'm not expecting anything crazy from them. I don't think they're as good as the 2021 team team that made the NCAA tournament. Uh, they've also played Purdue and Alabama and lost by like 30 and 33 respectively.
effectively. So I'm just not buying this Moorhead State team as a team that can potentially win a game, but that slow style of basketball could make things a little bit interesting for a little bit. All right, I'm actually pretty excited these guys made it. The Stetson Hatters made their first NCAA tournament appearance ever. And honestly, they could be one of those teams that could potentially be a sneaky 15 over a two upset. And the reason why is this team beat UCF. Yes, UCF. And they played Cincinnati pretty tough. And the reason why they could potentially pull off an upset is because they can really spread you out and hit a lot of threes. And they're led by their star guard, Jalen Blackman. Now, they don't play defense, so they're purely going to have to be a team that can't miss when they play. Because if they're not hitting their shots, they're not going to be able to defend at all. So if they get hot, they can pull off an upset. Yes, they're back again. Toothpaste. No, but seriously, Colgate, what a great program. They've made it to five of the past six NCAA tournaments. And Matt Langle has just refused to leave there for some reason. But why not just stay there? Because he makes the tournament every year. Now, they still have a lot of the same guys from last year's team, like guard Braden Smith. They've got Keegan Records, if you remember him with the long hair. Then they have Jeff Woodward down low. He has the lumberjack beard. So they still play the same style. Again, it's a little bit bizarre because they don't go for offensive rebounds. They try to get back and they shoot a lot of threes. But that being said, this year's team on Ken Palm does not rank nearly as great as they did offensively as last year. That being said, they are a much better defensive team because they rank top 10 at defending the three. So keep that in mind. Maybe their defense this year will be able to keep them in games because in past years, again, they've not been able to pull off that upset that they've been looking for. I don't think this team is nearly as talented as some of the past teams we've seen from Colgate, but I'm keeping an eye on that defense because if their defense has improved, that might actually position them to pull off that upset they've been looking for. Charleston, they're back in the NCAA tournament, currently riding the nation's second longest win streak. You remember this team from last year, they nearly got that upset against San Diego State in the first round, and San Diego State went on to the final four. This year's team, it took them a little while to get going. They did not play well at all to start this season. They actually went winless in a non-conference tournament, then they've lost to FAU. But since February 3rd, they haven't lost. They haven't dominated the competition, but they're playing the style that they did last year. You know, they crash the glass. They run a very high tempo, but the defense is a weakness for them this year. Rain Smith, if you remember him, he's the Aussie. He's their best player and brings a lot of energy to this group. But when you look at their losses, all of them came against teams that run a slow tempo and control the shot clock. So I'm not expecting an upset this year from this team, especially if they play a team like that, that controls the pace of the game, because Charleston's going to want to get after you they're going to want to make the game a little bit chaotic but if you can control them i just don't see them pulling off the upset south dakota state is back in the ncaa tournament out of the summit league it feels like they're always in the ncaa tournament now if you remember that 2022 team that had baylor shireman well this team still has a lot of those same guys like zeke mayo their star player and charlie Eastley, he's his running mate and they also have two other guys starting for them now that were on that 2022 team that got minutes now this team actually owns a win over wichita state who they weren't that great this year but that is still a pretty decent win. They're currently projecting to be like a 14 or a 15 seed. It's pretty low, honestly. I definitely like their potential more than some of the others that are projected around that range. I just don't know if they have the depth or the athletes to run full 40 minutes with some of the big dogs in the tournament. I'm actually pretty excited to see Oakland back in the NCAA tournament led by Greg Campy. That guy has been there for like 40 years uh, and they've not made the NCAA tournament since 2011. So it's nice to see Oakland out of Michigan no, not Oakland, California. Oakland in the NCAA tournament, they're actually a pretty good team. Trey Townsend is their best player. I mean, this guy is such a bucket. He's certainly going to be a matchup problem for a team that they're playing. He's their go-to scorer. They also have Rocket Watts on their team. If you remember him from Michigan State, yes, he's on this team. And when you look at their schedule this year, they've played a lot of good teams like Ohio State, Illinois. They played Drake. They played Xavier, who they actually beat. They also played Michigan State and Dayton. So they've definitely tested themselves. Now, did they beat any of these teams no, but they had some close games against Ohio State and Illinois and beat Xavier like I said earlier so they're certainly not going to be an easy matchup for whoever they play it honestly feels like a Greg Campy renaissance type of year this guy has just consistently missed the NCAA tournament despite having some pretty good teams over the past decade at Oakland so I'm actually going to be cheering for them by expecting them to win you know probably not but just basing it off of the numbers this is certainly one of those teams that I feel like is pretty well connected they've only lost three games since since January 1st, so they're playing pretty well right now. Definitely will be cheering for them. Longwood is back in the NCAA tournament for the first time since 2022, led by Griff Aldrich, their head coach. Yes, he's still there. This team 
I don't expect them to win a game in the tournament. Now, they did play a pretty close game this season against Dayton. I remember watching that. They also lost by 30 points to Tennessee two years ago in the NCAA tournament. And this team, I think, is worse than that team. So definitely not expecting anything out of these guys. Despite losing their head coach, Danny Sprinkle, to Utah State and going 14 and 17 during the regular season, Montana State went on a little bit of a Cinderella run in their conference tournament to make a third straight NCAA tournament. Now, this year's team is significantly worse in the past two years, and those teams did not win in the NCAA tournament. Now, shockingly, they do have a win over California, who wasn't that bad this year. But other than that, I'm just not expecting anything from this group because they don't go for offensive rebounds. And again, it's going to be a miracle for them to play a perfect game to win. Just not buying this team to win a game in the tournament. They'll probably be a 16 seed anyway. Well, Wagner certainly shocked everybody by winning the Northeast Conference because they were a sixth seed and heading into their conference tournament, they had a losing record. They were 13 and 15. So they certainly kind of went on a Cinderella run. And this is the same conference that had Fairley Dickinson win last year. Now, this will be their first tournament appearance since 2003. They won three straight road games in their conference tournament by using a complete defensive approach, you know, they didn't allow any team over 60 points and that's the one thing you'll see with this team is that they play super slow I mean they're one of the slowest tempo teams in college basketball they're actually top 10 at defending the three-point line on Ken Palm however that being said this is going to be a team that's probably going to the first four so it's great they're back in the NCAA tournament I'm not expecting them to win a game in the NCAA tournament except potentially in Dayton because again this is a team that has a very specific playing style and they're playing their best basketball at the moment because they're so bought into what they're doing all right, you guys made it. Let's go. Thank you so much for watching. I know this was a very long video. So if you did watch all of this, thank you so much. Maybe comment down below, hashtag locked in March. Because if you watch the entire video, that's pretty diabolical and I really appreciate it. Thank you so much for watching. Be on the lookout for my official March Madness breakdown, the entire bracket that's gonna be coming out this week. Let's enjoy March Madness while we still have it the normal way because we've had it taken away before. Seems like they're wanting to change it up a little bit. Let's just just enjoy it while we still have it the way it is. And thank you so much for watching. Again, if you're still watching, please go follow me on Twitter or Instagram or whatever. It doesn't matter. Thank you again for watching. Truly do appreciate it. And I'll see you guys in the next video.